15th of Feb today, uh, day one post COVID booster and look to start off the day I felt incredibly terrible. I felt like I slept well last night up until about 3am. I woke up at 3am and I was due to work that morning and I just like I couldn't get out of bed. I had body aches, I was shivering, I was hot, I was cold, woke up in a sweat, and like, I just had this, this mad brain fog, like I just couldn't think, like at all, well, I couldn't think properly, and it's been like that for most of the day, to be honest, um, so much so that I had to call, like I had to take a sick day today, because I'm, like I'm not going to be giving people, you know, dangerous amounts of medicine that you know if you make one mistake in calculating your dosage you kill someone I'm not going to do that if I'm you know if I'm foggy as and you know even then it just felt incredibly bad pretty much the same as what happened when I got my second jab uh, almost a year ago so it's quite late in the evening when I'm doing this. I started this at about 6 o'clock in the evening and the sort of last of the lights going down and it's going into dusk. Um, and I've basically spent the whole day pretty much sleeping and lounging around uh, and just trying to keep my fluids up. I just have not had any energy to do anything and I was afraid that I wouldn't be able to get a workout in today or do anything because I was just that sore. Um... But, you know, like I said in a couple of videos, if you can just get to a warm-up and you can get to a stretch, um, you can you can get the ball rolling from there. And if you if you just manage to, you know, drag yourself to a gym or a treadmill or put your shoes on or to the yoga mat, in my case, if you can drag yourself there and just start warming up, uh, good things can happen. Um, so today what we did was we did bodyweight squats, we did goblet squats with my kettlebell, and we did some, like, hamstring glute raises slash extensions, uh, and then some calf raises and some shin raises to finish off. So it's like a bit of a leg workout uh, at home, in the home, uh, for those that are feeling under the weather and have uh, made a promise to themselves that they're going to train every day, so they've got to do something. Uh, but I started with this stretch, better sort of condensed version of a... 15 minute stretch that I do it's pretty pretty standard if you've seen any anything else I've put up this is pretty much my lower body stretching routine uh, just to get everything firing I start trying to just get the hips and the glutes firing and some long stretches there um, and then we get into it so I started with uh, I think what I thought was 50 body weight squats but I lost count halfway through so I don't actually know how many I did and I'll have to look over this video and see it was like around 50 um, body weight squats and then I did my sort of hamstring exercises in between squats and then at the very end I did my calf and shin raises um, and the idea was to just do the goblet squats with the kettlebell as tolerated if I could get as close as I could to 50 that'd be great but like for the first two sets I could only manage 20 anyway for the last set I pushed for 30 um, reps with the kettlebell and then just did my remaining uh, 20 reps uh, to get 50 reps so the idea was to do 50 squats at a time um, you know do as many as I I could with the goblet goblet squats with the kettlebell and then finish it off with bodyweight squats so I think the first I think the first two sets I did 20 goblet squats and then 30 bodyweight squats and then the last set I did 30 goblet squats and 20 um, bodyweight squats so yeah look it was a it was a good leg workout I found that my hamstrings and my sort of hamstring to glute stabilization when I'm doing those I don't know whatever you call them one-legged um, leg raises I think you can call them uh, my stabilization there is not fantastic and I was just I just did three sets of ten reps and you know eight nine and ten you know of those reps were were hurting and I was to the point where I was close to cramping with them. Uh, so that might be something I might have to incorporate a little bit more into my routine and my warm-up routine and stuff like that. Maybe as I've incorporated the calf raises and the shin raises for my shin splints. 
Um, maybe I should incorporate that a little bit more because that'll obviously help with the squat, the deadlift, and those sort of movements that I'm aiming to improve um, in the gym. Uh, could also be a reason why I might be getting that um, that hip pain as well. Uh, could be problems with me, you know, my accessory muscles stabilize, stabilizing myself mid squat, or you know my you know, possibly the function of my glute, my hamstring in conjunction with my hip, you know, your psoas muscles and thing, things like that when I'm running as well. So it could be a combination, so that, that will be an area I'll look to strengthen. Uh, but apart from that, man, it was just like, it was just a hard, like, I didn't enjoy anything about this workout. I, f- I, I felt like I feel <laughs> absolutely knackered now, and it's probably like what, 30 minutes since I did that I did that workout I'm recording this now oh, but I don't know man I was just because I had muscle aches all over I was incredibly tight so you'll see it in a in a little bit doing some of my stretchings you'll actually hear my back pop and crack and then as I'm doing those one-legged you know, uh, glute hamstring raises or leg raises um, something else pops and I have no idea where it popped from somewhere from my pelvis to my lower back to my hip like something popped and you can see me jerk and there was no pain or anything like that it probably felt good you know probably good kind of sensation but uh, I have no idea where that where that popped from because I was, I was focusing on you know the uh, you know, the resistance in my hamstring and my glute at the time and I just sort of felt that pop and it you know sort of scared you know scared me for a second before I started to um feel that it was a you know it was a relatively good pain not a bad pain but i like i got a bad you know butt wink going on with these squats and you know i've just got no no mobility there even after stretching so it was it was not a fun session at all today and you know like you see in the background of my laptop's connected to me airpods i got some motivation going i was watching in the end i think the reason why i could dig deep in the end and hit the 30 reps with the kettlebell with the goblet squats was because I was watching a Rocky training montage on my laptop, uh, which was sitting behind my phone. <laughs> um, so, you know, the power of the Rocky training montage got me through, um, you know, as best as it could, I guess. But, yeah, look, it was, you know, it's it's a session that had to be done. Um, it's, no, it's not a session that had to be enjoyed, and... I think some sessions I have to enjoy, you know, especially if I'm going on a long run or something like that where I'm not looking to push a tempo. I think that's one I look, I have to enjoy if I'm going in the gym and I'm going to do like a light session, like a light squat session or a light chest session or a light back session. That's going to be something I'm going to have to enjoy. Um, because, apart, you know, apart from that, you know, if you like body weight stuff is what it is. It's not the most exciting you know, forms of exercise, but they're very efficient in what they do, and they get things done, and I've mentioned before, you can get absolutely smashed and, you know, jacked with just doing body weights, you see some of these, like, calisthenic dudes that just do, like, body weight bar exercises, and they've got huge shoulders, huge abs, you know, fully, fully ripped back, uh, so, you know, body weight exercises are fantastic, but it's just, it's just not the most exciting thing, like, to me, what's more attractive is, Hitting a heavy deadlift, or hitting a heavy squat, and hitting a heavy bench press, you know, at the moment, especially running as well, you know, like running a a good tempoed 5k or good tempoed 10k, uh, listening to some bangers is a lot more fun than than this stuff here. Uh, and same with lifting heavy weights as well, because there's a bit more of a challenge in it. I think the challenge in doing these uh, exercises here is probably a little bit of boredom. Uh, as you get halfway through, especially when you're doing lots of reps, like I'm doing, like I'm doing 50 reps uh, each time I'm squatting. So it's just, you know, it's it's a bit monotonous and repetitive, uh, these workouts, but effective nonetheless, and something anyone can do at home, you know, no excuses, you can't, don't have to do them all at once, you could fit them in throughout your day or throughout your afternoon, and takes like what two minutes to do 50 squats and max if you're going slow and I was, I was going pretty slow on my goal of squats I was taking my time but yeah look that's why I you know that's why I have this this video log and you know these videos to myself 
uh, is to hold accountability and that's why I put them on, on a YouTube page uh, just for anyone to come by and watch I'd, it's to keep myself accountable to hold myself accountable and to make sure that I hold this promise to myself uh, just with you know a little bit of external pressure as well uh, you don't want to be posting all these videos and then someone you know one of your mates or one of your family is watching you and then all of a sudden you stop and then the on the phone texting you or calling you going hey what's going on um, so yes yeah, just one of those external factors for me but uh, there probably won't be a harder session I reckon this year just listen to these pops like nasty man nasty pops and you'll get one up here again in a sec as well but oh yeah look this this vax just made me so sore and so stiff and like look at me I'm like lying down feeling puffed um you know this is not much exercise for me at all and like I'm feeling bloated for some reason as well I don't know why I'm feeling bloated um I haven't eaten a lot at all and I look like even looking at myself on camera I'm looking quite skinny um, you know, feeling bloated, feeling uncomfortable, it's just, I didn't have a good reaction to it last time, I, you know, I can't expect a good reaction to it this time, uh, but yeah, you look at the stabilisation there, and you look at my knee, and my knee's sort of wobbling a little bit, it doesn't, doesn't quite hold everything in line, but I think just in a couple seconds, something will pop again, and you'll see me jerk a little bit. Yeah, there you go, like, what was that? That was, something, something was there, you know, cause you can see in the, you can see in the footage, it sends a bit of a shudder through my body. Um, but look, I, I'll go through my thoughts of the day as well, I guess, I'm sort of feeling sick, probably not in the best of head spaces, not happy where I want to be in, in the relationship that I'm in, or, you know, not in anymore. Uh, it's you know it's complicated one of those things when you've been with someone for a long time and living with them for a long time uh, it's hard to define when things are over and you know account for your feelings and have some hard conversations with yourself but life moves on it's worse people in much worse positions than me it's just uh, something I don't like, and I, you know, I don't like to be sad. I'm normally a very happy person. If you talk to anyone that knows me in the works, I'm always just like I'm goofing around constantly. I'm, you know, usually quite upbeat. Um, so the last sort of three weeks has been a little bit, a little bit tough. Um, but sort of today, while I was lounging around, feeling sore and sorry, sort of got onto the on the interweb. And was having a look at uh, all these trucker protests going on at the moment. And look, it's it's an interesting situation they've got going over in Canada there at the moment. And like we've had same sort of thing going on here in Australia, um, New Zealand as well. And uh, look, a lot of other countries around the world, especially in the West, or you know whatever what's considered the Western world. Um, I think a lot of people are sick and tired of being told what to do by their elected officials. You know, this is a this is a democracy, and I think as you, as soon as leaders uh, start trending away from you know their job to work for the people, uh, you know, you were there and you're only there and you're only elected to be there because you're working for the people, um, and you have to listen to them and you have to listen to what they think are in. You know, think what is in... And you have to listen to the people and acknowledge what they think is in their best interests uh, vo versus what you and your government thinks is in the best interest of the people. Um, and, it, you know, what I hate when I think about politics and I look at politics is everything and all the decisions are done on a short-term plan on a short-term basis 
like here in Australia we've got like a lot of four year election cycle um, so you'll see you know, that year around election there's a lot of short plans and a lot of short promises um, and like you don't really see a government like from my perspective at least in Australia you don't really see a government get to start doing things until their third year so they they spend like their first year like justifying why they got into power they spend the second year sort of trying to fulfill some promises or fix a budget or you know plant more trees or you know build more hospitals and roads or whatever um you know, it's and it's like a you know it's like a halfway little election where they're sort of they're usually after a year they'll have a dip in the polls and then they're trying to justify to the public, you know, why they should be happy with the government they have. And then you see by the third year some of the things that they promised have started to come true, um, and then that quickly gets erased because the fourth year is an election year, and they're just making these short promises again, trying to buy another four years in power. And I think it's like. And like I'm not the smartest guy here. I'm not the you know the smartest guy in the world, or I don't I don't have anything to fix these problems. But it's a it's an annoying cycle, and nothing will get done on short term plans and short term promises. Um, and you can see over in over in Canada at the moment, I think their you know old mate Trudeau, who's I think he's just enacted an emergency act where he's gonna probably call in the army or something to clear off all these truckers and these protesters that are surrounding Ottawa and you know the irony the irony is right like he's pro he's probably pissed off that um, all these people are holding up essential services and uh, you know creating havoc in the city and you know people can't get to work and stuff like that it's but it's like what what do you think these people would rather be doing and you know like you're the you know Trudeau's the one who's locking the country down and putting in mandates for these essential services and I can you know I can see where the people are coming from as well I work as an essential service like worker I'm a, like I'm a health worker I'm a frontline worker and you can see that he's you know, like he's using he's using freedom as like a prize like a little like a little carrot that he's you know dangling in front of the people and he's like alright if you do what you're told and if you obey my rules I uh, at some stage, sometime in the future, you know, some timeline that I can't really promise, but I promise you it's there somewhere in the future, uh, your life will get back to normal and you can start doing what you want for yourself and we won't be telling you what to do anymore. And, like, look, you can see how problematic that is, you know, giving a timeline to people with you know, that you can't promise because you're like, oh, it's the COVID pandemic, we've been using these emergency... Um, you know, pandemic laws for two years where the where governments get uh, a greater, you know, expansion of their powers um, to control the population and things like that. And look, great, like, great, we were really scared during the start of Rona. But, uh, I, like, I think after two years and I think the world, you know, health facilities, countries, governments, public servants, you know, Everyone, I think we've had two years to adapt to this rubbish, and I think enough's enough. And I 100% support the people in Canada uh, doing their thing. I 100% support the people who drove down in Australia and you know did their did their convoy to Canberra. I think good on them. I think as long as it's peaceful and as long as it's civil and you know people aren't dickheads. You know I. I, I agree with agree with the fact that there's a lot of governments out there that have overstepped um, and overstretched their power. It'd be interesting. Like I don't live in Victoria. I don't have any friends in Victoria. But um, it'd be interesting to see, you know, what the perspective of is what the perspective is of someone who lives in Victoria because they had some of the I'll say strictest but also shittest lockdowns for two years, where you know lots of people literally didn't leave their house for two years, where. I've been in living in a couple of states where, at the time, uh, we were pretty much free to do what we wanted. Uh, you know, for a certain point, but yeah. Look, I'm not, I'm not for mandates. I'm for choice. I think people are adults. You need to treat them as such. And look, you can, you know, let let people do what they want. They're, you know, they're adults. They have they have a right to 
self-determination and you know let them do what they want to do if they if they want to have a vaccine that's fantastic um, have a vaccine if they don't want to have a vaccine that is also fine there's a lot of alternative treatments coming out and things like that um, you know for treatment in the community rather than waiting for someone to get to hospital and into an ICU before we start treating them for COVID uh, rather than just treating them with Panadol and Ibuprofen so yeah look that's that's where my sort of thought has been today and it's a you know it's a very slippery slope and how close you know how long do we have to wait until you know it becomes a totalitarian or authoritarian you know government uh, you know a place like say China or Russia that has a lot more oversight um, a lot more of the government's will is imposed on the population uh, to control the population I think it's a slippery slope and I think you know your freedoms should not be taken lightly and I think it is important to question everything that your government does. Uh, whether it's right or wrong, you know, I think it's it's importable it's important to question and make them accountable and make sure they're aware in a democracy that they are elected officials and they work for the public. They do not work for themselves, they work for the people that put them in power and they work for the best interest of you know, of their nation, of their people. And they have to listen to their people if their people want something. Um, you know, if it, and especially, you know, if it's an overwhelming majority, like sort of, I think what we're seeing in Canada, Canada by now, like, I don't know if it's just the media reports that I'm getting, but it looks like people are just fed up with, you know, old mate Trudeau. Um, over here, I think Australians are a little bit more chilled and a little bit more relaxed and, like, yeah, it's a good thing that we're not too fussed about too many things, but I think there's a bit of complacency there sometimes as well, and I think sometimes we need to show our, you know, support for our own freedom and our, you know, our own autonomy and our own rights. Um, again, you know, we're all adults, and I think we are all equipped with <laughs> brains big enough to make our own decisions, and not be told what to do by, you know, people who are meant to be working for us. So I'm going to leave it there. That's, this is sort of my thoughts today as I was sort of landing around on the couch. That's a lot which has been coming up in my YouTube feed as well of late. Um, so I just wanted to go through that. Verbalizing it also sort of helps me think through it in my head. Hopefully I'm feeling better tomorrow. Hopefully the aches and pains and all the other rubbish that this um, booster has given me starts to fade, I'll be working a morning shift tomorrow, we'll load up on Panadol and Brufin before I go, probably try and do some cardio after work, cheers and thank you very much, I'll see you in the uh, next one tomorrow.